So number eight, six marks for coordinates and nature of stationary points on the graph of this. Whoa. Oh, you know what it looks like anyway. It's an X cubed graph. It's a positive X cubed, so it looks like this. So you're going to have a maximum first and then a minimum second. But anyway, you'll have to go through it all. So differentiate it. Multiply by the power, take one off the power. Multiply by the power, take one off the power. And then it'll just be the coefficient and that doesn't change. So that goes. And then statement. Stationary points mean that f dash dx should equal zero. So that means that 3x squared plus 6x plus 9 should equal zero. I'll take the 3 out because they like that. And that will leave you... I, should, I was a bit hasty there, wasn't I? That will leave you x squared plus 2x minus 3. Which means you've got 3 times... Now I can do it. x times x. It must be a 1 and 3. It must be plus the 3 minus the 1. So there you are. x is either equal to 1 or x is equal to... Whoops. Negative 3. So that'll be the negative 3 that's the maximum. That'll be 1 that's the minimum. But you need the coordinates, so you've got these two equations. You've got equation 1, which is the coordinate equation, and equation 2, which is the gradient 1, which will tell you the slope. I better do that, I'll do that over here. So using equation 1, if x equals 1, then y will be, popping it in, 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared minus 9 times 1 plus 5, and of course those 1s don't make any difference. 4, 5, that just all disappears, doesn't it? So that's just 0. So something happens at 1, 0. That's the 1, 0. What about the next one? What about x equals negative 3? Well, that's a bit more of the way of working out. So that means popping it into 1 again, you're going to have negative 3 cubed plus 3 times negative 3 squared. That's quite handy. Minus 9 times negative 3 plus 5. Because they're identical, they'll just cancel out. That's a negative 3 cubed, but that's a positive 3 cubed, so they go. So all you've got is a 27 and 5 is a 32. So there's the second point then. You've got negative 3, 32. That's that one there. But now you've got to demonstrate their nature. So you need a nature table. X, something happens at negative 3, something happens at 1. That you can pick numbers. I'm going to use the good old tab uh, table of signs here. Now, 3 doesn't actually make any difference because it's always positive. But this dy by dx, the derivative, will be the product of those three factors. So that one's always positive. I know, I know you should really put a dot there, but they're going to be the same because it's a continuous curve. But I'll just do that. Keep them happy. Now, when x is 1, that'll be 0. If x is bigger than 1, it'll be positive. If it's less than 1, it'll be negative. If x is negative 3, it'll be 0. If it's less than 3, it'll be negative. If it's more than negative 3, it'll be positive. So what happens when you multiply them all together? You've got a positive, a 0, a negative, and obviously another negative. 0, positive, so it looks like this. Maximum. Minimum. Maximum TP, minimum TP. So I could just add that over here. One zero is a, remember that, that was the minimum, a minimum turning point is a maximum, maximum turning point. And that's six marks, isn't it? You differentiated it. You found when the derivative was zero. You made up your table over here. You got the y coordinates, so you got the two coordinates, and then you got their natures. I'll just put them here as well. Number nine, three marks here. Oh dear, you need this answer booklet for this part here. This diagram shows a graph of the function f of x equals log 3x. So those are the obvious two points we'd have got from it. The inverse function exists. On the, di on the diagram, your answer booklet, whatever it looks like, sketch the graph of this though. y equals the inverse function minus 1. So that just means get the inverse function and drop it down 1. Well, you get the inverse function by reflecting it in the line y equals x. 
because the inverse means interchanging the initial number and the answer, interchanging the x and the y's. So if I went through one there, it will go through one there. It's an asymptote here. It approaches this axis, so I'll approach that, and it bends off sharply. I have to be careful that bit. So it would be something like, oh, it's not bending off sharply enough. Well, that would be one, and that would be the opposite, actually, bit above there. That's one, three. So all you've got to do now is drop it down one. So presumably there's a mark for that, so I don't know what the diagram looks like. So if that drops down one, that's y equals f dash, f to the negative one x, I mean. If that drops down one, it's going to go to here. And then this line, the line y equals negative one will be the asymptote. So it shouldn't touch that, and then it goes sharply off after that. And the point that was one, three, will now have dropped to one, two. So those are the two points you would show to get the graph of y equals the inverse function dropped one.